we haven't, ooh, we haven't okayed minutes yet. Um, and I have not pulled up what minutes, it, Alyssa Brewer, when did you get all set? Do you have minutes that, I know that we were up to like a month ago for, how they are in the folder for the last couple weeks. So I haven't either. Doing them, they're ending up in there. And I don't know if that is a right assumption because I looked at this, um, I would say a week ago and I, was, and I realized that we don't even have draft minutes posted right now for like the last three weeks, I don't think. I, they're done, but I don't think that they're posted. Okay. Right. Yeah, Right. Putting them in, but right. I, I think we need to confirm at each meeting, like, who's doing it, because That's I'm fine. lost at, the po at this okay. point. Okay. Yeah. I imagine I'm caught, but I'm uh, doing some drafting. Yeah. Um, so, so, go ahead, Evan. Because it looks like we're missing 5.6, 5.13, and also I went looking the other day yeah. and couldn't find 4.8. Because um, I needed, I w for the report, I needed something that was voted on on 4 8, and I, I couldn't, couldn't find, it find there? those minutes in okay. the mi our mi minutes folder. I would flip to it, except that if I flip to it, then we're going to lose what our posting agenda on the screen. So, my recommendation for that is we are, we are behind. I can make sure because I know that. Uh, oh, you found it? So, what I will do is I'll make sure tonight that I upload everything. We should all have it because I did get an email, we all got emails when the minutes were sent, yes. I think you should assign someone else to do that. Yeah. You don't have to do everything? Okay, um, well then maybe, so Phyllis, I know that George and Darcy, you've been yeah, alternating, just redoing, so yeah. do you know how to upload them to SharePoint, yeah? So maybe we should just um, take some time this week so that um, even by or tonight, we want to take a look at them at our next meeting, which is also this week, just quickly. So I think we just need to upload them um, so that they're available at least on our SharePoint. And then we can be ready to um, approve them. But at least they'll be up just as draft on our SharePoint if we could upload those. And then if you guys want to work out, yes, George? Just to give us the dates again, if I understand it, 4.8 is still, uh, needs to be found and uploaded. 5.6 and 5.13? 5.6 is in there, it's just that they, um, they're labeled differently. So you want them? So, so all, all, the, all of the minutes, most of the minutes we have are minutes and then the date. And then five six it starts with the date and then minutes so it was just out of order so five six is there just needs to be relabeled. Thank you, Phyllis. Yeah, we were, I'm sure you sent us before. No, we're just yeah, it's just not uploaded, so we just need to go back. So what we so if if you guys feel comfortable, uh, George and Darcy, just taking a look at what's uploaded on the SharePoint and then we'll just uploading the minutes that have not been uploaded yet and then just mark them as draft. And if you have any questions on that, feel free to ask anybody, me, or Alyssa, anyone. Because we have five, six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we have five, six. So we need four, eight into the SharePoint. We need four, eight into the SharePoint, and I'm hearing that we do not have 513. So we want to upload those, and then we want everybody to look at them so that we can then, yes, Alyssa? I was just going to ask that the vast majority, as Evan mentioned, the vast majority are in the same standard formatting, so whoever's relabeling these, please relabel them that way, either as draft or as approved, and start with the convention minutes and the date. I know it's a pain to right. be consistent, yeah. but it's easier to. Find it's so much them. easier to scan a yeah. list. Yeah. There's also two 422 minutes. One is a PDF and one is Word, so I'm not sure. 
they both label draft. I'm not quite sure what the difference is between them. So maybe whoever put them in would just weed out the one that we don't need? Sorry, I put up the one from 422 that's the PDF because it was it was Phyllis's email. Okay. I put up a PDF okay. of her email that had the minutes in it and then it looks like they were converted, but they just need to it just needs to be clarified. Okay. Okay. Okay, so um, I would like to talk about, and you can tell me if you think this is completely out of order, but who is going to be the interview designee for finance committee? Yes, Joy? Can I make a nomination? Certainly you may. I nominate my esteemed colleague who <laughs> left, Darcy. Oh, I, I second that nomination. All, uh, discussion? Oh, she said she was thrilled. She said, oh. <laughs> Is there any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. All right, that was unanimous. Um, so with that, um, Darcy, I would say uh, that I will forward you in case you do not have them, the what uh, Andy sent to me for the interview questions that Finance Committee had come up with, um, and then request that you know maybe you just reach out to him one more time to see if there's anything different that he was looking for for qualifications other than what he's told us already, although we did kind of have a conversation about that. So if you feel comfortable with that, that's fine. And then to get a hold of um, Angela to start setting up your interviews and I will make sure that it is, is understood that OCA has different rules about when they get their CAFs than REC does and make sure that we all get the CAFs for that at the same time that Darcy does, which should be soon, so you can look at them before for a little while before you start your interviews. And Alyssa, I see a question on your face. <laughs> so, yeah, there is a very different process for town manager appointments with the RAC being involved with people only getting, interviewers only getting 48 hours notice of the CAFs themselves, which has nothing to do with our process. No. And so I have no idea why it was applied to our process. So I've requested that the Finance Committee CAFs be sent to us as soon as possible, but since we didn't have the ranked choice voting or participatory budgeting ones until this morning, mm -hmm. I said those were the priority and those came out, which is great. And so the Finance Committee ones, hopefully they'll be able to get to us in the next day or so because I feel like whoever the designee is should get a chance to really look at that pool, no matter who actually shows up for the interview, right? Because it's always possible. It's less likely because this is such a new committee, but say for Planning Board and ZBA, there were people who applied two years ago, right? Maybe right. they moved out of town. That's fine. We can still see what the pool was. Right. And so we, all need to, after we get through this round, as part of our evaluation of the current system, need to have a real conversation with the town manager about how our process, which may change, mm -hmm. differs from the RAC process in terms of that only getting right. 48 hours notice. And of course, the town council voted to get the CAFs that they haven't seen the CAFs for ranked choice voting or participatory budgeting. Right. They haven't seen the CAFs for finance committee either, which is good from the standpoint that, you know, the designee has to see right, them, right? right? So if you're, if you're gonna you know, roll things out, but I'm not sure why there needs to be any separation in time between any That's of those things. That's what I'm things. saying, yeah, there shouldn't and be. And so the sooner they're out, then also it gives you a sense of, wow, am I gonna have 25 people to interview, yeah. you know, potentially, or six people to interview potentially, and that can help you figure out your availability when you tell that to Angela. So hopefully, so you'll be forwarding that. The other question I had was completely separate because Finance Committee is this separate thing where yeah. they came up with their own questions based largely on our questions, but they came and visited us yep. just moments ago, it feels like, we're it, in yeah. here all the time. Mm -hmm. And so what is the very last version of their questions? Was that not, like how far back is that version of questions? Like the Finance Committee's questions, like they sent those to all of us and the, that's yeah. what I, we all already have yeah. as opposed to when you, for example, were in direct contact with 
right. the planning so these board are chair the and the ones CBA that, chair. That, that Andy sent to us, I think, like basically the morning of our last meeting last Monday. Okay. Those are the final questions that I have. I and I would assume if they're just a week old that that they are the final questions. But again, if you want to, Darcy, if you want to just reach out to Andy and say, hey, I'm going to start this, but if there, is there anything that, that you feel like Finance Committee has thought like differently for qualifications, because you want to be able to put your qualifications, like list them. It's, it's helpful going into interviews, like obviously knowing what you're looking at. So if, just if he's changed anything or Finance Committee has changed anything, and then I will definitely, um, I'm going to follow up as chair to make sure that those CAFs go out to all of us at the same time and that you have a chance to look at them to sort of prepare a little bit longer before your interviews start. And remind me, who, who will be joining me in those interviews? And isn't that an excellent question because I don't think that we decided that at all. So that's an excellent thing to think about. I think that we had suggested a couple people, did we? Um, so... Mm -hmm. I would think, yep, I, you have, yes, Alyssa. So we were right, we didn't talk about, because we've been so focused on everything else, plus we didn't know if we were actually gonna get to do the interviews. Right. So this only right. came back to us fairly recently. And so it was my understanding that, like the others, you know, trying to, right. we're trying to have our own process be similar to each other. Um, what would be the appropriate finance person that, that's a staff member, right? right. Because we right. said it couldn't be a counselor, right? Because right. then there'd be two counselors in the room but the finance person that works with the finance committee. And right. so it would be up to the town manager to decide whether or not that person had the time or if the town manager wanted to do it or if the town manager wanted to be there at all. So, I mean, it's, it's the usual, like we always have in all those parentheses, you know, yeah. if available, right. if they choose. But I think, it's, I think it's the finance person that most directly works with the finance committee. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so. Darcy would get a hold of Paul and Paul would say, he, yeah. yeah. And then you could then decide if you wanted to have, you know, someone else there besides the person that Paul suggests but for, right? Or who else? Well, usually is it? No, we would agree as a committee okay. who was coming, I right. think. I, okay. Unless you, I'm confused. I mean, this is no different than the process that you right. use for planning board at ZBA. And so the three that we said could be there would be town manager, staff liaison, and chair of the committee. Obviously, chair of the committee is not applicable right. here. So it's staff liaison and town manager yeah. are the two that should be there. But if we, if, 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 if Darcy wants to inquire and then, you know, tell us, I would say it would have to be quick by like, if we're meeting on the 22nd, just to let us know. Just no, saying, let's okay. figure that out well, now. That's, that's what, so that's what it felt like the rule was to me. So maybe I didn't say that correctly, but going by what the rules are, like, so I was thinking town manager, cause that's a person we said that maybe could be there. Staff liaison, someone who works closely with whatever committee, right? right? So in my mind, that's who I was assuming could or would be there. Right, and I'm saying I wouldn't ask the designee whether it was any of us to go and pick, find somebody else outside of discussion, outside of this committee. We're deciding at this committee that okay. it's the town manager and again, exactly the wording Evan used, and if the town manager suggests someone else as a staff person, but there'd be nobody else we'd want to include as a non-staff person, no, or we wouldn't no, suddenly decide to no. include the clerk of the council, which we've never included. No, in I'm sorry, I guess that wasn't how it was in my mind. I must have not elucidated my thoughts yeah. clearly. I think we just kind of follow that statement we put in our reports as to right. who was there. Right, correct. Yeah. Okay. I don't want anybody to have freedom of will. What are we talking about here? <laughs> I, I wasn't even <laughs> suggesting it, so I apologize for <laughs> misspeaking in any way, shape, or form. Okay, that's awesome. So, excellent. Uh, that's, that's settled. Yes, Evan? So, one of the things that we did um, for you in mm. Planning Board and ZBA that was not done for George and I, um, and, and so I had to kind of think of it on the fly, um, was evaluation criteria. And so uh, we had gotten from uh, the chairs of Planning Board and ZBA what they're looking for, and you right. used that to some extent yes. to evaluate your applicants. Um, George and I were sent to do ranked choice voting and participatory budgeting, um, and we weren't given any guidance from this committee. Uh, and so I think that we used our own best judgment, and I did write in my report the criteria that I used, but they were criteria that were 
by me. Um, and it, it was actually a little bit awkward because in one of the interviews, when we said, do you have any questions for us? One of the candidates said, yes, what are you looking for? And, and, and I sort of went, okay. And so all of a sudden I had to think on the fly. Um, and so I'm wondering if it might be useful uh, to offer Darcy a little bit of guidance from the committee as to sort of what we might be looking for. And uh, I know Finance Committee gave us some guidelines. Yeah. Are we giving her those guidelines and saying, we're gonna essentially do what we did with Planning Board and say, the committee gave us these guidelines, do we wanna add our own? I think it would have been useful, I think, for me, in retrospect, to maybe have a little bit of guidance. So, absolutely. So when um, Andy and Kathy came and spoke to us last week, um, they, were, they spoke to us about the fact that they did not feel that the um, resident members of the Finance Committee would be, they did not see their role as bringing up, you know, sort of mentoring new Finance Committee um, members. They saw it as that the residents would be people who were already kind of up to speed and could then assist Finance Committee in their work. So that was the, the thing that I felt was uh, my largest takeaway of that. Um, would anybody else like to, so to me that means, you know, finance background, the background that is pertinent to the work that the Finance Committee does. Um, I'm assuming that we're also looking for the things that we had talked about it generally that it is good for someone on a committee, which is uh, being able to get along with others, having an open mind. Um, people want to add to their description, the qualities to help Darcy? I think they all sound right, and I think that the questions that the Finance Committee gave us will be, in a way, the criteria. I know that some of the members of the Finance Committee really want to see different types of expertise, like a balance of expertise in different areas of finance. So um, I'm not an expert, but neither was Jim Pistrang when he chose the members, <laughs> members of the Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. But um, I think I'll be able to ascertain those different areas if okay. I ask the questions and be able okay. to bring it back to the, this committee. I think one of the things that people who have gone through this are saying that it was helpful for them, or I know it was helpful for me, and I feel really bad that I sort of threw George and Evan into the ocean without saying that this was helpful to me, but being able to write down ahead of time what were the qualities or the qualifications that I was looking for really helped me in evaluating um, people who were interviewing. So. Again, like maybe even talking to you know Andy and Kathy and saying you know really kind of making it super clear like what are the different areas, what do you think are different areas that would balance for you, and being able to write those out ahead of time I think would really help you. And I apologize to my colleagues who I kind of threw into the deep end there. <laughs> I definitely would want to do that. Okay. Excellent. Great. What's the timeline? Super fast. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> slow poke. Yeah, slow poke. Yeah. Yep. So, luckily, of all the things we're doing, this one has slightly less time pressure, right? Because there's none of this within six months kind of thing that we're that we're having to do with a lot of other things, including ranked choice voting and participatory budgeting. So, I know that it had been discussed at council, and and the president may well have an may want to offer to this that it would be ideal to have them start with July first but that would mean that we would have enough time, theoretically, to, you know, because how we work backwards, that the council would be able to make their final vote instead of at the, you know, at the second meeting in June, rather than like trying to make the June 3rd deadline of our next meeting after tonight. So the second meeting in June would be one at which the council could act and it would still be in place for July 1st. Or if it was the one after that, then that wouldn't be the end of the world either. Um, but as opposed to the really tight time frames we have on some of the others. But I would think that ideally we would like to be able to see if we could get this done in time, but it has to do with how far we have to back up. So, I mean, it's all well and good to say let's do this by X amount, but we, it really is that boring conversation where we have to figure out, just like we did 
with ranked choice voting, participatory budgeting. Okay, we had to add a meeting so that we could have right. 48 hours mm -hmm. notice of the names, right. so that we could have 48 hours notice of the names to the council, and blah, 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 blah. So we should probably, so my thinking is we should probably sort of set up a loose timeline for Darcy for that, because I know that although we can say, well, we don't have a really tight timeline, the Finance Committee did ask us very politely that they have people starting by July so that people would, you know, be able to start relatively early getting used to the whole new budget process. So does anyone have the date of our second June meeting of town council? Right, 17. Okay. So we'd want to vote on these things by the 10th, which means we'd want Darcy's report posted by the 5th or 6th. Which means she probably wants to do interviews next week. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> tight. It's really tight. Also, it's so, uh, or Just push it off. the following week. I mean, it, <laughs> no, they have to schedule people. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that she can't drop everything to do that. <laughs> All right. Well, or, or, can we slow it down just a bit then? I mean, um, instead of, uh, Make it the vote on. You're thinking of trying to get a vote on 617. So That's the alternative is for the we could vote 7 1, right? Alyssa? So yes. I think we should ask the member of the Finance Committee who happens to be present right now what they think in terms of one, the timing, and two, how critical it is, which I'm guessing it might be more critical for this body than for some others, but that's not up to me on the town manager and the staff liaison actually being able to attend these. So perhaps the. I think if you uh, were able to bring them forth on July 1, that would be fine. Uh, the heavy lift of the finance committee is hopefully by June 30th because we have to have a budget passed yeah. by the council. Uh, there uh, very clearly may be some lingering uh, issues that in fact will create the need to have a finance committee again in July. But, and I do know that there are several things that the finance committee will start working on over the summer, but I think July 1 would be fine. Okay. But July 1 is still Two. nearly impossible because of this yeah. interview schedule. Yeah. What and about then you? the next op opportunity is actually three weeks later, so it'd be July 22nd. Okay. Oy. Wait, okay. what, why is July 1 nearly impossible for the interview schedule? Just We're having to put the interviews off another week. The, when, weren't we just saying that it was going to be too tight? Well, if, when, if, if, Paul's, if Paul needs to be there and Paul's away, and so therefore... When's the Paul away? So if, if we're saying that the council would vote on these in July 1, then OCA would vote on these 624, which means the interviews could be done the week of June 10th, or even June, it could be done June 17th or 18th if she can produce a report pretty quickly. That's all, but you're not building in any extra weeks for either town council or OCA to not just to not agree. Now, whereas we've been building in an extra week for that very purpose all along. And so if we're trying to follow our own little baby process that we just started, um, I don't want us to go into things assuming, oh, of course OCA won't have a problem. I mean, we don't know. And of course town council won't have a problem. We don't know. And so if we prevent them from having a problem, that seems unfortunate. I mean, if we, we need the extra time because we get to talk about it once, and if we send the designee back, which we haven't done yet, and I'm hoping we don't have to do, um, we wouldn't have time to send them back if we did that. And we wouldn't have time, we could potentially try and schedule a second meeting in a week, for example, 
but we're going to love that this week, and we'll see how much we enjoy that. But it also, again, doesn't, if, if you're saying this pool, which we have on our decision as a possibility, right, this yep. pool is not adequate, you have to go back, yeah. that, which we could do on Wednesday for ranked choice voting and participatory budgeting. This group could say, these are not adequate, you have to go back, so we build in enough time that you could do that as the designees before it has to go to council around saying, oh, well, time's up. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to be able to build that in for finance as well. And interviews couldn't be done the week of the third? They could be. Could they? I see nodding. They could be done the week of the third. So if they're done the third week of the third, we could meet about them on the depending on when, either the tenth or the seventeenth. Yeah. Right, right. Because if they're done, so that if they're done, and the recommendation is ready by Thursday morning at nine thirty, the sixth, which means they would have to have taken place on like Monday or Tuesday, right? Realistically you got to have five minutes to think about it before you write your report. I think you gentlemen <laughs> would probably <laughs> agree. And yeah, so then that, or that pushes it the following week, then 8.30 in the morning, or 9.30 in the morning on Thursday the 13th, so we could discuss them on the 17th. If we didn't, if we had a problem, then we still have the 24th available to us. So does that all work? Yeah. So yeah. ideally, the week of the third, so that you right. definitely have time to write the report and have it uploaded by Thursday the 13th at 930. Yeah. yeah. Giving yourself enough time for Wednesday to make sure that you, you know, like Wednesday morning, so that, you know, you make sure that it's posted by that Thursday at 930. Um, so is there... Uh, any other discussion on the Finance Committee interviews? The designee, yes. I just have a couple things I wanted to talk about the Washington Post um, We have that email from the chair of the Finance Committee, yes. Andy Steinberg, from the morning of our last yes. meeting, right? Yes, we before did. he walked in. He didn't change anything while they were here. I mean, no. we just talked about it. No. And so that is the same email. Yes. It's the and, email and from where the is that? And I'll upload it to the packet in like two seconds. <laughs> yes, sir. One question that I wanted to ask Finance Committee when they were here, but we sort of had other uh, bigger fish to fry. Um, but that I was curious about was um, question five, which is finance meetings have been during the day, afternoons. Do you have any restrictions on terms of days of the week or times of day? And what I wanted to ask them is sort of, which might be important for Darcy's, how important is that question, right? Yeah. So if someone, if someone is really great, right, but they have a nine to five job and so couldn't yeah. meet the current, does that mean that that candidate is de facto disqualified, or is finance willing to adapt their meeting schedule going forward? Because that, that I, I didn't know if that was a, a minimum requirement question or just a curiosity question. Yeah, I think that's a good question. I think it's more of a curiosity question, but I will tell you because of the Finance Committee's heavily, heavy reliance on staff, to come to their meetings, to review budgets, to, and then for Sonia, um, if we start meeting in late afternoon and evening, it's not just a, an issue for the council, it's really an issue for the staff. I mean, I, I, can, I personally could go either way, but I want to be considerate of what we're asking of other people. I mean, a lot of people in town would like all of our meetings to be at night. And, um, you know, it's, it's really a balancing act. So I would view it as a non-issue if it's a person that's terrific and so forth, but I wouldn't, um, it, it, it could create a problem 
but it's not just for the council. It's also for staff. Yes, Alyssa. So I, th I think we have a couple of different things we're dealing with here. One is that finance committee is running differently now than it ever has in the past because the legislative body is different. Staff always came to night meetings to finance committee before. They were, it was, they were Thursday nights and that's how it was. Yeah. There's a really intense, and that's been true for many years. So obviously it's possible, but there's been this incredibly intensive set of meetings that has been different yeah. than previous years. And so I totally appreciate that we're doing them during the day right now. I think once we get through this first cycle, yeah. right, just like they probably won't have to meet every five minutes like they do now, like we do right. now, that may alter. But I think it's, it's fair to tell applicants now that this is when they meet. And we'd love to have you, but the reality is if you can't meet during that time, they're not gonna be able to have you. We hope you can you know, try and stop by at some point. And then in future, Right? right, as their meeting schedule becomes more l less insane, I yeah. would argue, um, that they're not meeting as often, and certainly, obviously, it varies over the course of the year, but they may be well able to participate in a different way then, but I think that the reality is, based on, on what we're hearing, is that that schedule's working right now, right. and so to imagine that no matter how amazing these four people might be, they're gonna be able to change the schedule, I don't think that's realistic people we reduced the number of residents to three people yes yeah, seven so I I'm, don't want to belabor this conversation but I do want to make sure that we're sending Darcy in with all the stuff the one other thing that I might want to put in in the questions um, so there's questions about the like time commitment generally um, but it might also be good to just confirm with them that they're willing to serve a three-year term, right? Which is what it right. is. Because um, I think it's two. I thought it was three years. I thought it was three. It's yeah. two. We're all really yeah, confused. We're all, that okay. We obviously don't have the current charge in front of us. And that right. was the other part of my conversation, which is that we wrote, we wrote a ZBA and planning board summary. Right, and we, we don't have it. a finance committee summary. I asked for that, actually, at our last meeting. I suggested that finance committee write that, and so I know they've been super busy, but I think that would actually be really helpful, just like that planning board or ZBA right. handout that says we meet on such and such date. So it's not just covered by the questions. I mean, we, we covered that in our questions to right. planning board and ZBA, too. We said, here's what the commitment right. is, but there was also a handout that said what the right. commitment and was. Which I think if you would sense. like such a handout, please email Andy Steinberg and Kathy Shane President, a chair and vice chair of that committee, I am sure they would do it yeah, immediately. I, I asked for it last week. So but apparently, we, we, we can, you know, with everything well, else going on, it so just we, we kind of slid yeah. by. We, we, we did ask them to do it, but because we didn't have a timeline, they said to us, how pressing is this? And we said, you have more important things to do with the budget, so it's not super pressing. So I think we need to come back and say, remember what we said last week? <laughs> Forget JK. It. Forget <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> and we... The third. Mm -hmm. So I, I can do I can do that and also maybe include what we had for planning and zoning just yes. as a draft send like them, to give them an idea. Just send them the final versions, which they right. already received for other reasons, but send it to them again and then they can see how long right. a thing they want to write right. and then you've got that. Just for a template. Right there for them. Come on, Alyssa. Okay, so we've established that it's three residents, two years. That um, we can send. I can send the email to um, to Andy and Kathy saying, "Oh, it became pressing. Um, here's what we need from you. Um, here is the template that we use for a handout with planning and zoning. If you could use that as your template and get it back to us um, before the. Do we say that? 
we don't meet again before the interviews start because of Memorial right. Day week. But if they could get it to us for the third. That's why I put the third, yeah. Then we could talk about it at the third, right? If they got yeah. it to us, and then we could talk about it at the third. And you, even if you're starting interviews later that day on the third, at least right. you'd have it. You have Does that something. sound workable? If they have it, if they have it now, why wouldn't they just send they it to us? They haven't created it. They yet. haven't created it yet. Oh, the template. So we're going to. The well, we have a template, and then they need to fit their finance committee's information into such a template so that we have a handout to give people who are interviewing for a resident space on finance committee. Okay. Does that and you're asking for that? Or you can. It's it's totally up to you. So what you would need to do is tell them. Yeah. So I will, I have this as I, old school, really big exclamation points <laughs> and the date. So I will make sure that that gets done. I would say I can do this today after we're finished. So I'll send okay. that out. And I will CC you. I could CC everybody. Okay. <laughs> what are you not finding? We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. And I can, I can also do another exclamation point and make sure that I send these to people. Um, okay. All right. Thinking all interview designees, thinking back to the quandaries they had during the process, is there anything else we feel like we want to arm Darcy with? So we started, go ahead, Evan. Right, we keep jumping around. Um, so finance committee did a really good job of giving us draft interview questions, which it sounds like we're okay with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they also gave us qualifications. And so I guess my question that I don't really feel like was answered was, do we feel like we're comfortable with these qualifications or do we want to modify or add to them in you, any way? Where do you see them? Uh, in the email from um, the chair, Councilor Steinberg. So I can just read them. It's, it's in our email. Okay. If you just literally I search your... Or if you just search, if you just search your email for Andrew Steinberg, it's the last and email I have from him. What's the date, just so that we? May fifteen, May thirteenth. I'm doing that right now. I'm on it. A thing in SharePoint in today's meeting pack finance resident member questions list Steinberg email 'm interested in question two what do you envision as the role of the resident members of the committee um, because I'm not sure what answer we would be looking for or not look we're not asking a specific answer Oh, 
Um, so that confuses me a little bit if we're trying to make it clear that Finance Committee had, a, a, had already envisioned what the role would be from what I understand, which was you're, um, you're not being, I mean, I think it should be clear to applicants that Finance Committee is not grooming them to become a Finance Committee member, that Finance Committee is looking for people to, uh, that are up to speed to assist them in their job, which is what I believe I heard from Andy and Kathy last week. If anybody would like to tell me if they think that I am incorrect, I would be welcome to hear it. But I'm, I'm, I would think that if we're, if that's exactly how we were told to look for people, that I think that applicants should be a, aware ahead of time that that's what we're looking for. Discussion. Well, since the residents don't have a vote, um, they aren't really going to influence what the committee is doing in that way, but they can fill in in areas of expertise where maybe it's needed on the finance committee um, because right, so they only have I'm five members and two of them are brand new to finance. And so it's my understanding that you know there are gaps and areas where these people might be able to fill in areas of expertise. So then I would say one of your qualifications, if you know the Finance Committee is looking for certain areas of expertise, then that could be one of your one of your qualifications that you might want to write out ahead of time. George? I think most of, <clears throat> most of the questions are fairly specific, and the person would provide a very specific answer. This one is a little more open-ended, might give you just a feel for uh, how the person thinks, how they see themselves in a role like this. So it has a role perhaps just as a more open-ended question, given I think most of the others are fairly uh, specific. You know, what's your area of expertise? Um, you know, what are your areas of interest? You know, what are your time, you know, what can you do with time commitment and so on? Have you watched a meeting? Um, these are, you know, pretty much straightforward questions. Number two gives a little room for them to uh, think and uh, for you to listen. It seems like with the, uh, the first sentence of number two, it seems like it's asking, do you have an agenda? Doesn't it? Because the first sentence is, well, I'm not sure that it's <laughs> not a good idea to ask that question, but um, I'm just saying that I'm not sure what it means, but um, I think I'll ask right. the question. Yeah. Well, I mean, what do we think about that? Because we did originally, when we were talking about planning board and zoning board of appeals, is we all made a decision not to ask questions that would lead to any eliciting of somebody's, I, I guess what I guess we're calling it, personal agenda or uh, feelings about certain things that a committee had done before or should be doing after. So I think that is actually a valid point. Lynn, first of all, let me just say these are questions that the Finance Committee recommended to you. If you change them, that's your decision. Right. Second of all, um, the that's not intended. The issue of the fact that this committee has voting and non-voting members creates a very different situation than most of our other committees, although not all, okay? Uh, so the reality is um, it's to, it was meant as a very open-ended and in no way was looking for people's bias. I, I just want to be very clear about that. Is there some way that we could maybe wordsmith it? Is there a different way to ask it that sure. somebody feels more comfortable? Again, yeah. these were what we right. recommended right. to you. Right. I now suggest you do yeah. with them what you want. Yeah. Evan? So if uh, we have a handout, like a fact sheet, yeah. that's going... Yeah. I think that that first sentence that explains, I think they just wanted to clarify it to make sure they're clarifying to people that they're possibly being appointed to a board to which they have no vote. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that could be included in that fact sheet. I think the role, what do you envision as the role of the resident members of the committee? I think it's what George is talking about, which is sort of um, people are prepared for the question, what are your experiences, right? How, what are your qualifications? People are prepared for those questions. Um, sometimes it's nice to have a question that people aren't necessarily, uh, wouldn't have thought about ahead of time. 
because it forces them to sort of think, and I think it's that thought process you're looking at. Um, even if they get the questions ahead of time, which we should discuss whether they do, because they did for Planning Board and ZBA, I don't know that they did for RCP and PBC. Um, in fact, I'm sure they didn't. Uh, but, but I think that the question is, that's a really open-ended question. You're, I think you're just looking for maybe, yeah, thought process and, and thinking. Um, but I think that that first sentence could be removed and just put in the fact sheet. Yeah, and, and, and also I think you brought up a good point, which is we, okay, this is a baby practice, and again, we may change this so it's never the same again, but we should be following what we put forth as um, uh, rules for how we want to do things. We should be doing it the same for everyone. So in that, I think that if we're saying that our questions are, no, you don't think so? so yeah, uh, we definitely we definitely should be following the same thing, which means to me, we fell down somewhere um, when we did, when we sent Evan and George out to do um, participatory budgeting and uh, ranked choice voting because we didn't make it clear what the qualifications were ahead of time, which I believe we should have done. And also, we should have made sure that we all had the, um, the CAFs well ahead of time um, all together and that absolutely positively um, the questions should be in the packet and we need to, because this is all new, so we all have to coordinate so it becomes an actual practice, is that we then say to the person who's scheduling the interviews, here's our packet and this is what needs to go out. So I think in sort of trying to get things done on a timeline, obviously planning board and ZBA were a big deal. I think that maybe we didn't, prop I myself did not properly make sure that I was a steward of the process, so I will make sure that I do that better this time around. Just in defense of the RCV and PBC, the other complication, of course, was that George and I were restricted in the questions that we could ask by OCA, um, but because it had, those two committees had joint appointing authority and the town manager was there, uh, he could ask whatever questions he wanted. And so it maybe would have been weird to say to them, here are some of the questions you'll get, but we don't know what the other ones will be. So that's um, a really good point. Alyssa. So where I'm at right now with having so much fun with our materials is I am in the SharePoint. I am in the section that says interview materials when final, which is not in fact true because I'm working on something that isn't final. But what I did was I took a copy of the frequently published interview questions that we voted on April 8th mm -hmm. and I retitled it and for, that it's for finance committee now instead of for planning board and ZBA, like we didn't do for ranked choice voting, et cetera. But um, I retitled it and I say it's modified with finance committee 513.19 input. I, what I would like to do today, even though it feels a little laborious, is I would like to look at these questions, which, is the que which are the questions, in fact, that ranked choice voting participatory budgeting asked with the town manager, of course, being able to ask additional questions because there were other appointments present and take what we want from the finance committee's questions and put them in here and then we have a document that is our document that are our questions as influenced by the finance committee because the finance committee either out of their own heads made up mostly the same questions we had or they looked at our previous questions and adapted them. So. There are some specific things in here that we want to bring over. We've already talked about the fact that we want them to do a handout, right, like we did for Planning Board and ZBA, which will also help us be clear on what we're wanting in Finance Committee applicants. But we should not be saying, oh, here's what Finance Committee gave us as questions, those are our questions. No, we should be adopting a set of questions, which are now this new thing, which is, like I said, our old questions, but we should just go ahead and alter our first question is, our first comment is, welcome, thank you for taking the time to fill out the form and apply. Why did you apply? How did you learn about the vacancy? Their first question was, why are you interested in serving on the Finance Committee? We don't have to ask it that way. We can ask it our way. There's no, but there are things in here, like they specifically mentioned the charter. We, should go, we can go ahead and incorporate that into one of our questions. But I feel really uncomfortable that we've got like multiple sets of questions and multiple sets of criteria or written or unwritten. I mean, if we, if we want to evaluate our process at the end of this, hopefully it is a process <laughs> that we're evaluating, right. not random threads. So, I think we'll start, I mean, if you have the one up, if you put the one up there, that tells people who have questions. If you put the one back up there, then the finance committee. 
interview questions? Yeah. And I have in front of me, and we could all have in front of us if we wanted to. I just, I just had the it up for me, but. That we voted April 8th and that we are now modifying very like much on the fly. So question one is already covered. Are you saying for the finance committee question? It's already incorporated in our why did you apply? What how did you learn about the vacancy? Specifically that that question about what do you envision as the role, right? Is a, something we've just been talking about. And so figuring out a way to that would be useful. But saying things like is there anything else you would like to mention? I mean, we already have those questions in our <laughs> standard questions. We didn't need that. We needed questions that were different for Finance Committee, but this was originally developed, I'm sure, for Finance Committee to do their own, in, you know, so we're just adapting it for our purposes. So, do we want the comment? <laughs> The charter in section 5.5b says, you know, what do you envision as the role of resident? Do we want to ask that question that way, or was there a different way that people felt like it needed to be asked in terms of that whole agenda discussion? And I'm sorry that I don't know how to do a split screen to show both of those yeah. together. Yeah. And does does so it? We can all be looking at one here and one there. Yep. Do we have a lot to do today? Um, because I'm if we could conceivably like. Um, just take our original questions, put them in a document, and and make track changes, suggested track changes, to incorporate the suggestions from the finance committee, or vice versa, whichever we want to do. But maybe we want to start with our own um, offline, so we don't have to do it in this meeting. Uh, depending on how much we have to do, which I don't really know. Um, well, I mean, our agenda is posted in terms of what we have to do. So I, can go I think right back to that. personally, I would like to see us take 10 minutes and see if we can finish this and just be done with it. Okay. Because I don't think we need an elaborate track changes. I don't think it matters. I think what matters is we had questions we voted April 8th, which is available to all of you on your SharePoints right now to look at at this very moment. Um, and the public, because they've seen it published a couple different ways. And the question is just, which questions that the Finance Committee is specifically asking, knowing that they're also going to be writing in the, a handout that explains their viewpoint, which will really be helpful, that will go to the applicants. Okay, so which question, questions do we need? So question one that we have is welcome. Thanks for taking time to fill out form and apply, <coughs> um, which should probably, should definitely be there, yes. Um, Sarah, what I'm not trying to be, I You're am just bossy. Trying to fit in. I'm You're just trying to, to take the finance committee questions and fit them into, our fit them into ours. Right. right. So yeah. that's what I'm trying to go through. Um, Where are we finding ours? Um, I can give Published you. them hundreds of times and we, okay, five times. And we had, they're on SharePoint yeah. right now in the interview folder um, materials. Oh, look, Sarah has copies. Awesome. I, and Good it's job. It's just a quirk of, it's just a quirk that I end up having some of these that had these. Um, so our split screen can be a paper and a screen. I'm just looking to see if I have another, if somehow I have these in another. Let's start over here. Good. I've Your got them side by there? side. Okay. I don't, but I'm going to get there. Oh, George, thank you. Okay. So. Example. Yes. Item. Is what is your relevant expertise and or experience yeah their question three is do you have any specific experience or knowledge that you want to highlight we, we're doing that already unless we want to adopt some of their wood we already did that like our question covered that that's fine correct the part about participating regularly fits in with the question our current question eight about the time commitment so I think we just need to pull from here and see if there's anything in right. here that isn't something we're already asking. So you, um, when, obviously when I asked these questions, I said in, in the packet that you were sent by Angela, you, I, I, did you receive the um, blah bitty blah handout that explained the time commitment and also, um, I think I just said time commitment. Um, and I think that, that it, presenting it obviously that way then 
you know, and then you can say, do you have any other questions, which the, the liaison, the liaison, well, yeah, the staff, the staff, the relevant staff person to finance could probably, if they need, had any other specific questions besides what was in the handout, could answer those things if we could not. So you're basically trying to find out, do you understand the time commitment, both, and, and the workload is, I think, how that question kind of comes down. I don't know that we would have to ask it a different way than the way that we have it here. Does anyone have any ideas about that? I'm saying that our interview questions and, and how we ask that, I don't know that we would have to ask that in a different way in order to get the same answer that the Finance Committee questions have. Discussion. So, for example, I think we could, so out on paper our current question based on the handout and the package that Sarah's referred to says our current question eight says what about the time commitment and committee meeting schedule on the provided handout that statement about during the day afternoons etc is going to be in their handout just like for planning board it was in their handout that they meet on Wednesday nights and for ZBA that they meet on Thursday nights mm -hmm. so I don't even feel like we need to bring that over to this. No. And so the only one I'm seeing that's any different than our questions is the part about envisioning the role of the resident members, because this is an unusual body, right? right. They don't get to vote. Right. How to, figuring out how to phrase that is probably not a handout sort of thing, right, so much, as a, as a question that elicits a range of responses that you can then compare to each other as you're thinking about your interview. So what I'm saying is that I don't see anything on the Finance Committee question list that we need to use at all, because it's already covered in our questions, except for item two, talking about the role of the resident members. And so I'm wondering if we just add a question or if we alter one of our existing 10 questions to incorporate that. What if you replace five, take five out and replace it with two? And I think the wording of the Finance Committee is fine as it stands. I don't see any need to wordsmith it, but others may disagree. But I think if you just take R5 and replace it with their two, you might have a list of questions that would work. Yeah, I think that it makes sense to add um, any specific areas of interest to uh, four, like they have in their three. Um, and I think that we should, we have relevant. Somewhere put the qualification section that they have on top for us to use as a reference because it seems like they're good criteria to use. But toward evaluation. Yeah. So our, if you so look at all our reports that we've written so far that talk about how you right. evaluated the results yeah. of right. your interview, that's what the top part is, right. so it doesn't go we on don't, the questions No, it doesn't part. go on the questions. No, well, no, but I think Darcy might. I'm just saying this is yeah. all to help me. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> if yeah. we as a group. Is, is your evaluation yeah. criteria. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. This is what we'd like you to be looking for in a sun black and white. So I, I think it's fine for us as OCA to incorporate those qualification criteria. Um, to the questions. Oh, not to the questions. No, I don't yeah, think no, she means to the questions. questions. Separate, no. yes, it's separate. It's a separate document, but not as our questions. Uh, no, because that would go against everything that we've no, no. said that we were going to. So we need, we need another document, which is fine. No. Which is fine. We need an evaluation document that's basically that whole top section of the Finance Committee questions. After you ask these questions, you get the answers, you have your results, and then you have your, your chart or right. index cards or whatever you're using, and Venn then diagram. you say, I'm looking for these things. Right. And that's, that's, yes, and that's for your own use, and then when you write your report, you have that. But we will make it into a document. Okay, we're, we're going to make that into a document, ASAP. Well, so, with regard to interview questions, yes. so, so far, the only thing we have changed is we removed our question five, which was yeah. about what important perspective do you bring to the committee, and we replaced it with their question five, which is about how they envision the role of resident members. Their question, their question two. Their their question, question, I'm sorry, two. So their question two, we delete our question five, their question two became our question five. That's the only change yes. we've made so far. 
Darcy suggested also an edit to question four, and it, it, we didn't, we, and we all kept talking. Question four and their question three are similar. Is there something you'd like us to beef up with our question four, Darcy, that yeah, picks up just some of add the question? The same thing, the second sentence, any specific areas of interest? And our, um, the conversation we had was that our question eight encompasses both their questions four and five okay. because the information in those two questions will be on the handout, correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I think, I think because of all that, what we will do is we will ask Sarah to send the finance committee when she's asking them for their handout, right? Mm -hmm. And she's sending them the planning board and ZBA handouts that she says, here's the, what those handouts looked like. Please make a finance committee handout. Here are the questions we're asking, and we figured the rest of your questions, that material would end up in your handout, the part about mm -hmm. the during the day, during the year. That's going to be part of their handout. It isn't that we're ignoring those questions. We just figure it's addressed a different way. It seems like number two are on the um, finance committee list. We're, we're including that, right? That's re now replaced our question. Um, it seems like it, we should add, uh, just so it isn't like a trick question, just add, um, uh, do, did you, were you aware of that? And what do you envision as the role of resident members? Because basically what we're saying is, this is the case. You don't have a vote on this committee. Were you aware of that when you applied? Because that's important. Um, and what do you envision as your role? Because that's what we're asking there. We're asking, are you aware that you don't have a vote on this committee? As opposed to like previous finance committees. Um, it is, right? Is that what we're asking? George? It could come out in asking that question that you will discover that they're not aware, but that would seem to tell you something about their level of uh, preparation, and uh, that would be informative to you. So rather than, I, I, you would ask a good question, but maybe just leave it as it is, because if the person goes, oh, I don't have a vote, that would say they haven't really looked very closely at the materials yeah. and not done very much homework, and because that could be interesting just for you to know. May not be a decisive factor, but rather than sort of a leading question, let's just leave it as it is. Yeah, and you could learn something if they say, I don't have a vote. Because we're giving them a handout. We're specifically giving them an interview packet, and part of that packet is a very specific handout from Finance Committee about what their role would be. So if they haven't taken the time to read a spe very specifically written um, like one or two page description of what's involved as their role on finance committee that that might tell you something right so we're sort of saying you're you're not a decision maker on this committee so what how do you see your role yeah yeah yes sorry yeah <laughs> no yeah yes yes i'm going to add the part about not being a decision maker do you want to make that I personally would, well, I personally would like to ask, you know, say the statement, do you, did you understand that? I don't think that we need to say you're not going to be a decision maker. Um, but I, w I think that's the purpose of it is to find out, to get a little feedback from them uh, that they understand that and then why are they applying in light of that? What, what do they see as their role? Which they may have already answered in number one. So, um, but, you know, it's, if people don't think that's, I don't feel extremely strongly about it. I just think that uh, that will, as I'm asking the questions, that will be, an instinct that I have to ask that, you know, to say that.
So, sorry, George. So to me, all right, so we, so our number eight is what about the commitment and committee meeting schedule and the provided handout. Um, so do we want, do, I mean, do we want to be more specific with people that are applying to finance committee and, and ask them, did, did you read what you're gonna do and you know that you're a non-voting member, what does that mean to you? Some, some part of that seems awkward to me, but I can understand, I guess, what they're. Evan can speak to this. Uh, oh, you can sorry, speak to it, Sarah. I'm sorry, but um, no. I think you learn something from this yeah. process. And yeah. so you, you, wanna, you have some questions, but there's also a learning mm -hmm. aspect and just uh, don't sure. try to overthink it too much. Um, <laughs> That's what I do, Pastor. Okay, no, so no, thank you for bringing me back. Yeah. So one other thing I'll say, having literally just gone through this, is the questions should be fairly simple. Yep. And so I would actually think that our their question two, our new question five, should just should just be what do you envision as the role of the resident members of the committee? Right. Just that sentence, because it's awkward to have to say to each person. The charter in section 5.5b yeah. says, right? Like that's <laughs> yes, going to be awkward. It, you're probably just going to. And the other thing is that, and someone already alluded to this, the answer to question two may actually come out, or the answer to our, I'm going to use ours. The answer to question five may come out in the answer to question two. Why did you apply? They might say, well, I know the, non, the resident members are non voting, and here's, and then you don't have to don't ask that. question five, right? And so I think if you just keep it as a simple, what do you envision as the role of the resident members of the committee? Because if they say, I, if they say, I want to be able to vote on these important matters, then you go, huh, they didn't, they were unaware of this, right? Right. Well, what we could say is uh, just add non-voting. What do you envision as the role of non-voting non resident members of the committee? Add non-voting because then they get the question. My first question would be, and, and who are the voting residents of the committee? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. They, yeah. they were in the past. <laughs> I like Evan's idea of striking that. I agree with him in the experience. I don't know about his but I, and Sarah's, but you really don't read long sentences. It's, these are fairly short questions, and um, so having it short would perhaps be fine. And if you want to insert non-voting, yes, I can, let's, let's I can insert yeah. non-voting so yeah. that it makes it what what that question, the angle of the question is. Oops, sorry. So do we have then a set of questions we're yeah. set, we're happy with, yeah. and we can uh, move on to other exciting business. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. So let me pull up our. Let me pull up our agenda again. And now it's going to give me this. Okay. Um, I don't know. Okay. So the next thing that I, we would need to, I would like to get at is just a, um, an update from our interview designees for rank choice voting and participatory budgeting. Um, we know, and I, it was also posted to our agenda, that they have finished their interviews and that they have submitted reports. We aren't going to talk about any of the people on the reports until Wednesday. No, we're Wednesday. not. I'm just okay. saying that as an update, as an update, we, we do have that. And would our, either of our esteemed interview designees like to say anything more about that other than I did it? <laughs> right. <laughs> so you have, um, if you look at the meeting poster for our Wednesday meeting, you'll find three documents. Um, one is from George his recommendations for participatory budgeting. One is from me, my recommendations for ranked choice voting. Uh, the third is a document labeled supplemental information, 
And this is the information that was, I just want to explain this because you're probably going to look at that and go, well, I don't understand what this third document is. Um, so if you looked at, we used a, a Cyrus report for planning board and CBA as a model, and at the end she had things like, um, you know, screenshots of the, the postings that we solicited uh, applicants, um, the interview questions, the process, and George and I felt like it didn't make sense for us both to both have like 14 page reports because we were reproducing the exact same information. So the intent was that his report was only the recommendations for PBC, mine was only recommendations for RCV, and all of that sort of appendix information would come as a supplemental document to both reports so that we weren't just copying and pasting the same things into each report. Um, and so you'll see those three documents, um, but that supplemental is meant to apply to both George's report and my report. Uh, I thought that it went pretty well. Um, it went very smoothly. It was tiring. Um, but um, at the end, uh, I know there was some discussion uh, as part of the, 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 this committee about, well, what happens? How do you figure out town manager versus town council? And it all went, at least in my experience, very smoothly, very quickly, um, to the point where I left the interviews and two hours later wrote my report. George? I didn't quite do it in two hours, but um, <laughs> it, uh, it went smoothly and uh, was, uh, I thought, a very uh, positive and uh, I felt for Sarah <clears throat> having to do this really by herself. That certainly I thought if I was doing this, the thought that I would be the sole person running this show um, was, uh, yeah, I felt for you in that. Thanks, George. No, I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Alyssa. I just have a couple follow-ups. I don't know if you would have seen it, Evan, and I know the town website was down for part of last night, too. But um, there's a shorter version of the four pages that are in there that are, it's just the vacancy announcement um, that's available. And so it would be great to substitute that in before we send it to the council, right? We don't need to yeah. fix it, right? It's that... It's that we just need, when we put this all together for the council, which we'll do after we meet Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. Then we'll s just substitute in the one-page version rather than the four-page version that includes all the millions of announcements that were around that same time period and that includes the actual cited charter reference that was originally intended to be in there. So that, that same page I'm talking about was within our report right. Right. to council for tonight. And we'll just repeat that. And it'll be one, you know, three less pages. But I really appreciate that what you said about rather than let's republish the whole thing twice for both George's and mine when really they scan very well together. And you went ahead and you said that you put in your whole text process about that and you used both the titles. The only question I have is George did his demographic different information a little differently, which is okay. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that. Because the first two pages of this supplemental information are entirely, I believe, about ranked choice voting, we should just maybe clarify at the bottom, again, this is when we prepare for, for the full um, town council, to say maybe at the bottom of that second page of your graphs is to say, you know, there aren't graphs for, for the other body. The information is in the text of the report, just so they don't go, oh, I see. Two, two, two. How come this one only has one? So, good question. And we, this is probably a discussion best suited for uh, when we actually discuss the reports on Wednesday. But maybe something for people to think of before then. Um, so, I have charts for my demographics. George does not. Um, there's two reasons for that. One is I simply uh, made those charts immediately before even going to the interviews. Um, and then uh, when I talked to George afterwards, he felt as though uh, he didn't necessarily need them, but I had already made them, so I was like, I'll just throw them in. Um, the, other, the other thing to note is that um, my pool of candidates was substantially larger than George's. I believe it was double the size. Um, and so to some extent, it felt as though his, it was one of those like the sample size is too small to even warrant doing it. Um, that said, it might be worthwhile for the members of this committee to think prior to our discussion Wednesday whether you would want them for ranked choice voting or whether we should just extract that before it even goes to the council because it's not super useful. When you read 
my report, you will find that I insert a little bit of editorial comment. Um, so um, that may form some basis for discussion on Wednesday, but I felt that that was okay. But you may want to tell me on Wednesday you prefer that I keep my editorial comments to myself. <laughs> but um, I did uh, say something about uh, demographics in that section. I had a brief comment or two, which is my opinion, obviously. And not, so if you, in the future, don't want us to do that sort of thing, we should talk about it. But I felt I had to say something. Thanks, George. Alyssa? I was just going to say that when we, a lot of what we're doing is we're trying to do multiple not only are we trying to do multiple bodies at once, but we're also trying to think, okay, this is the way we're doing it, but let's keep thinking about as we run into each little thing, we go, oh, that's something we need to think about for when we reevaluate this. That's something else we need to think about. And one of the things we've talked about repeatedly here, as people who enjoy watching all these tapes know, is that sample size issue. And so there were some people, you know, I always was of the opinion, you just go ahead and tell people there were 28 applicants, there were four <laughs> applicants, there were five, and then, how, men, how, deep, how many much you wanted to slice and dice it from there started getting tricksy. But some people would argue that knowing there were only four applicants for five positions is an issue. And so um, I, I hope that's something that I'm not sure how we best keep track of this given all these electronic mm -hmm. devices we have, but that that's something we talk about when for, on a couple of different points. One is, at what point do we say we need another push for applicants? At what point, because now we're like, we're like out of time. I mean, we got this six month deadline, right? But in future, at what point do you ask for additional applicants? And not that there's anything wrong with the applicant pool, but just to have more right. choices. Right. And two, at what point do you not mention the number of applicants? Because the place where that has come into play is that hasn't actually happened yet, but is a theoretical issue we may face at some point, especially if OCA rejects any of the recommendations, is that arguably one might have applications and not fill all the spots because they don't think that the people were a good fit. So then if you mention how many applications you have, and it's clear you have more applications than numbers you're actually filling, then that produces yet another kind of tension in the conversation. So that could happen. We could have applications that we reported a number and for a lot of different reasons, including that they moved out of town, including that they're no longer interested, but also including that we don't think they're a good fit for this particular committee at this particular time. It may be really obvious to people that they weren't one of 30 people who applied and just didn't get a slot. It's that they applied and they didn't get a slot, period, and we left something open. So I think these are all things we have to think, figure out how to talk about when we're done with this particular round because seeing uh, you know, those kinds of graphs, right, don't work very well with small pieces. Okay, I have been disconnected. Reminding us to come back to this. Yeah. I have a question, <coughs> question for Evan. Do we have a report with names from you? Yep, so just as um, Sarah's report was posted to our meeting posting, yeah. um, if you go to our meeting posting for the 22nd, there should be three documents attached. My report, George's report, and the supplemental information. The, this was posted last week. Yeah, for posted on Wednesday's Friday. Wednesday's meeting yeah. of this week. It was all posted last week. Yeah. But it's on the meeting posting. It's not in the SharePoint. It's not supposed to be in the SharePoint. Right, exactly. Right. So in the same way that you found Sarah's, you would find George and mine. Just a procedural question for the chair, um, and actually for all of us, I guess. But we voted interview questions on 4819. You just altered the interview questions. So for Darcy, um, it seems like we should probably vote on that. Um, to be consistent. Okay. Um, I don't know if that's possible for us to do today. I think we, but uh, it seems like we should do that. Okay, so. I'm less concerned about qualifications, right. but that's also another issue. I think in the past we've sort of left, well, we obviously have not um, done that for at least two of the uh, bodies we're appointing to. 
Um, but I do think, at least for any of your questions, we probably should have a vote. So it's, it's in the SharePoint right now. I'm sorry that I can't pull it up. Yep. supposed to be final because it won't let me move it because it thinks I have it locked so it's actually supposed to be in today's packet it's not it's in the pack it's in the folder called interview materials which is outside of our meeting packets the previous ones but then it goes on to say it's finance committee at the end okay. instead of ZBA yeah I'm I've been kicked off I can try to get back on um, do you, I can so, I can read them. Um, five. Do we are we leaving that long uh, chunk in? Would you, would you alter five? It's not in the document. Yeah, my understanding is that we had sort of decided by consensus to keep only the second sentence and to put non-voting in front of the word yeah. resident. So it would read, what do you envision as the non-voting role, as a role of non-voting resident members of committee? Be yeah. my first question, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now it says, what do you envision as the role of non-voting resident members of committee? Okay, do you, do, you, do you want me to read these out loud? We had talked about doing that. Because well, the, because the conversation was, if these are literally the questions that Darcy is asking, ah. you're not going to read that out loud to every no. applicant. That's, that's part it's of, awkward. That's part of the conversation right. that finance committee has. Yeah. Got it. So it's now question five is now stripped down to a normal size question. <laughs> it says, what do you envision as the role of non-voting resident members of committee? Yes. Right. Got it. Thank you. So that's what finance is. Did we make any other changes? So, no, I don't think so. So one is welcome, thanks for taking time to fill out the form and apply. Two is why did you apply? How did you learn about the vacancy? Three, have you ever watched or attended one of their meetings? That would be finance committee, but we know that. Looked at their webpage. What is your relevant experience and or expertise? Any special, specific areas of interest? was added to question four. Right, well, we're just making sure that everybody knows what they're, that they're agreeing on the same things, right? I'm sorry that that can't be, that's why I was so. It's a beautiful view. <laughs> Wish I were there. Um, <laughs> committee <laughs> report. <laughs> Outreach communications and appointments stand. Okay, so this is how I'm going to make this motion. Um, I make the motion that BOCA um, accept the finance committee interview questions. No, tell me. Go ahead. I'm bad at motions, so you go, girl. You just have to do it all the time. We make the president do it all the right. time, too. Right. So here's what I, the way I retitled the document. So I'm betting George is going to come up with something out of this. I retitled the document to say outreach communications and appointments standing, blah, 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 blah. Originally voted for a modified with finance committee May 13th input and voted 520. So it isn't that we are not doing the finance committee's questions. We have modified, we have created a set of new questions for, fin for finance committee. I don't think, it says that right on the document. Right. I don't know that our motion has to be as detailed as that, but it could be. George, you're good at motions. Well, I, I prefer a motion that's very detailed, uh, unfortunately. Uh, for, so the motion would be for OCA to adopt is that the right verb? I think so. Um, the uh, interview questions and protocol um, originally voted 4819, modified for the Finance Committee 51319. Uh, I'm sorry, modified with Finance Committee 51319 input. And I would stop there. <laughs> 
So again, I would uh, move that OCA adopt um, the interview questions and protocol originally voted for 819, modified with Finance Committee 51319 input, period. I'll second that. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. I've been trying to click on Evan's, Evan's rank choice voting uh, yeah, recommendations. It doesn't work? Can't well, open it. Can't. It, that's what's on the left. I just that's opened it. Is there some reason why it isn't in SharePoint? Yes, because what I yeah. said, it is not open, open meeting law compliant to put it in SharePoint. It's open meeting, so we had to put it out to the public. We can copy it into SharePoint now for you to use, but that was not the place to put it. But yours is in SharePoint. No, it's not. George's is in, George's is in SharePoint, but Evans is not. Okay. But it, we don't have to talk about this I now. copied well, things we into the May 22nd. I copied some materials into the May 22nd meeting packet that are copied from the town website posting. So maybe one of those links is broken, but if you go into the SharePoint meeting packet for May 22nd, it should have those, just as Evan said earlier, it has the supplemental information, it has ranked choice voting report. Those things are all now also in the OCA 522 meeting packet. So if it's not, if you were trying to open it from the 522 meeting packet and that wasn't working, then that's a problem. Is George's in SharePoint? Where, where, where did you see George's in SharePoint? In our meeting packet for today. Not for today. Or for uh, the 22nd. But not for today. I don't. I don't see it there. I just opened, they weren't there, I refreshed and they were there. <laughs> yeah. Right, but that is important for when Darcy brings forward hers, you, she cannot just add them to the SharePoint, right? It has to go to the town website. Here's the, here's the rep. If you put them in the SharePoint first, you've now expressed an opinion to a quorum. Therefore, you're in open meeting law violation. As soon as it's uploaded, then we can copy stuff down into our SharePoint, but we had to wait till it got uploaded as part of the meeting posting. George? And again, in my experience, um, I sent my final document directly to the clerk, correct? Yeah. And she takes care of it. Exactly. She and Angela work it out, and I'd have nothing to do with it getting to uh, its proper open meeting law location. I don't do anything for it. I just send it to them. They take care of it. 
and that's where I stop. So we don't communicate with this group directly before we send our report to the clerk. It just then Correct. it goes to to everyone. It goes to the full Correct. council and to us. Correct. It's, it's, it's not going public. anywhere. It's going to and the, the yes. It's specifically not being sent to anyone in particular. It's only being posted to the public. That's what it's what that's what's happening with it. Correct. Eventually, a version of it will be submitted to a town council packet. Just as tonight, the town council packet includes the second version of yeah. the planning board and ZBA recommendations. The first version was posted as an attachment to an OCA meeting. We discussed it at OCA last week. We decided how to put together the piece parts for the town council packet. That got posted at the end of last week, so the public and the town council can look at it without it being an expression of opinion to a quorum outside of a posted meeting. And that's how tonight at town council we can look at that. We're having to kind of restart that clock, right, with ranked choice voting and participatory budgeting. First, it ends up on the OCA posting for Wednesday. Wednesday, we talk about it. Wednesday, we decide what the rest of the information is we need to send to the council, including we hate these recommendations or we think they're wonderful. Um, and then that gets posted to the town council thing. It doesn't, none of this gets no. distributed. It's that it's getting posted. This, this format that you both used was pretty um, uniform between the two of you and similar to the one that Sarah used, yes, so, okay. We would, we would expect unless we agreed otherwise that this one would also follow yes. that. So someone, uh, well, there are word versions of that report in our SharePoint that are draft versions that before they were turned into a PDF that was used for posting. So if you can't open the PDF, I mean, nobody's expecting you to retype it all, right? I mean, like there's a Word right. version out there right. that you can just carve pieces out of and throw pieces into. Right. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through the things that we have on our agenda and make sure that we feel comfortable that we have, we have done them, which is prep for OCA 522-19 consideration of OCA designated reports on RCVC and, and PBC, which I think we just sort of talked about, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, review and prep reports to town council for 520. Um, I don't know that we would, I don't know why we, we would yet do, oh, oh to, to maybe to help people for their Tonight? reports. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, Evan? I think we put on that in case we still need to discuss, but do we feel like we as a committee are comfortable with what's happening tonight? That's exactly why we put it on there right. in case anybody had any questions, since this is our first time at this rodeo, um, if anybody still had any questions about what we discussed last time, what we agreed would we, we would put in the report and then got put in the report because remembering that because we're all volunteers and, and only work 40 hours a week at this instead of 80, that we are not able to have run that report, right, by this group. Like, we didn't rewrite it on the fly like we did those questions. And so now that you've seen what was sent to the town council, not everybody here had seen that, right, before it got uploaded. And so only the person writing it had seen that. And so this was the opportunity by putting it on the posting to say, why did we say that? Or I wish we had put more emphasis on X, Y, Z because if there were any changes or any tips for the presenter tonight being There's two presenters. and Evan, that then we could say, I wish you'd done that. And so like this, try and look at it, Darcy, like the whole like rules thing, right? Like we came up with the rules, we came up with a report, but what are the things we're gonna emphasize during the report tonight? Because we don't get to talk about it for two hours straight. We only have a limited amount of time. And so this is another chance for this group to say, I read, that's assuming that all five of us read the report that went to the tent, that's for the town council tonight. And if we had any particular ideas beyond just 
thanks for doing our presentation tonight. So it is my understanding, which I guess not everyone knows, that Evan is going to present on the OCA process in general, in a general way. And then, so that people don't get completely bored by listening to one person's voice for an extended amount of time, then I am going to present very quickly, on, as quickly as I can, on what my role as designee, what I looked at, what, what I used as a practice. Um, and I understand from reading the cover letter um, things that I need to make sure that I express as OCA's overall views on um, the practice. I don't know if there's, yeah, George? This is a general question uh, for all of us as we go forward. Um, Sarah's written a report. Um, the assumption is that council members have read it. Um, does she really need to um, go through some of that, or can she just uh, kind of cut to the chase? And, and this is a general question for all these contexts. When the council has before them a written report and the chair or designee is um, you know, informing the council, um, how much do you feel it's useful to have someone pretty much restate, uh, in shorter form, but restate what's already written there in black and white? Darcy? I, I think it's actually pretty important, especially in this set, you know, preceding this set of appointments for Sarah to kind of lay out what her reasoning was. Um, so, you know, sort of the way she did last last week for us, maybe not quite as extensively, but I think it is important um, because people need to get an idea, like what the. This was the first was. time. Yeah, dude, this is for the first time, so it might be worth. Because I'm thinking yeah. in the future, at some point, hopefully we can come. But I hear you. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. No. All right. uh, normally we would not want to do this, but I think for this set of appointments because it's so important. I, I'm just thinking that sometimes, you know, with all the things that we have to read, that there's a cover letter and then there, but basically a cover letter, and then there's my report, which is obviously very long. Mm -hmm. So you have to assume that with people having to read a whole bunch of information all the time, that maybe they didn't read all 14 pages mm -hmm. of what I wrote. Maybe they, they kind of looked through the cover page. I yeah. think something just brief, especially since this is obviously a, uh, heavily discussed <laughs> practice and I think that you know the practice as well as the nominees will be something that town council in full will have many questions on mm -hmm. I don't think it's I don't think it's bad to quickly recap sort of what we did because we haven't really presented anybody this this practice yet so this is our time to do it Evan your thoughts oh okay. yeah oh sure go ahead ping pong I don't know if this is a question for the chair or for the president um, but for our are, are there is this an just off the cuff presentation? Are there is there a slide deck being prepared? For this particular one, I have not, but I am certainly willing. What I would do is mostly a slide deck of the nominations, not um, not a slide deck of the whole nineteen-page report. Yeah, you could just use uh, that on the first other hand, page of the OCO report that has all the names, all listed. Last time, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, last time, when we did the ones that Paul had nominated, I did actually give, uh, provided two slides that summarized the process. So um, let's make sure I do that again. So, but. That's the process, so that's what Evan is speaking to. I do not feel like I should try to summarize in slides what you would be saying, but I do believe, as Darcy has said, that talking about it is important, but also to be brief. Because not only do we, the council, have the memo, but does, so does the public. So, okay. Everything. So I'll do slides on the process. Thanks, I'm just trying to do my slides while I'm listening to you. <laughs> just a little multitask going on. Um, okay, got it. 
and I don't, you know, I'm probably not going to go into, you know, a ton of detail, but I think just going over, like, here's, here's what I looked at for qualifications, mm -hmm. you know, just like basically how I laid it out for you, and then right. I'm expecting that the conversation will go, you know, to people will ask me more pointed questions, or they won't, or they'll just make a motion, or mm -hmm. that's what I'm expecting. Melissa. I'm sorry I interrupted earlier. I was trying to be too quick. Um, I think it's incredibly important that this body ha make the decision on what those slides are, and unfortunately, obviously, we're out of time because, like, you know, I had a different situation with rules and other people did it, and et cetera, et cetera. So um, I don't want us to be put in a position of, of, like, worrying about what's what. So maybe if there's a way that one of you can talk to the president about, do you want to show the blue chart? Like, for example, that's like one of our, like, fam that will become one of our famous decision tree documents, process decision tree. Like, what are those things? Rather than necessarily having to translate them, maybe there are pieces you can already use that are the equivalent. Or if you're going to have to rewrite stuff, I'm leery of doing that just because it, it is so such a complex process that to, it's not a test to see <laughs> if, if you can fit it into two slides. So maybe it's, maybe it's, you know, using the decision tree and it's using the page that has all the names, like the, the, the single page sheet, which is like probably page three of the final document. I mean, obviously there are a lot of different ways to do it. I'm just leery of it being a surprise to Oka tonight what's on those slides. I would not do that, but I will have to warn you, I can't get to making those slides until exactly. about one o'clock tonight. What's realistic, exactly. So. But I would send them to the two of you that are going to present. I, would, I, don't, I don't do surprises. <laughs> I can help it. <laughs> I mean, the, the other option is um, if I'm presenting on the process, I could make the slides. Yeah, it, that's you, fine. If you want to draft them, please send, send them to them me, to and then I make sure CC I send Sarah. Margaret exactly marked slides based on the item so that she knows when to put them up. The other piece is I would stick as, stri as much to the report as you can so that there's no, nothing else. I mean, if you look at the slides, if I look at the slides for the one we used last time, I think there was one page of dis written description and one page of the actual uh, flow chart. Okay? So this is for the committee. Um, I think that when we put uh, the ECAF recommendations up and we put the process up, um, it was good that we put the process up but because we literally just used a picture of the vertical layout document process that we had put, no one could read it, yeah. right? And so would this committee be amenable to me reformatting the process, not changing anything, just reformatting to be m more visually understandable on a PowerPoint slide? I would I, to remember everybody who wants to can have access in the report. I would discourage any changes in how it's presented in the report that's posted on the web, even though it can't be read by the audience. I just don't think um, that's wise. Okay. That's fine by me, and, and I will say it's my son's birthday today, so I'm not, and I also have no tech savvy whatsoever, um, so I won't be able to provide my own slides. My feeling is, from speaking to everyone here, that m what I say should be somewhat uh, minimal, minim minimal and stick to what we have in, um, in our documents. I guess so. Okay. All right, well, we are now drawing on to 11.30. Um, so I, I did pull up the, the goals um, presented by the president. Um, I had pulled that up. So in looking, I have a, a worksheet to do with all of you about our OCA goals. I don't know how much we want to get into it um, right now. I feel like we are pretty much running on time, although I do want to soon, if we possibly can, fit it in. Um, outreach Communications and Appointments had a subcommittee. We do have a subcommittee. We just haven't met for a while, and we talked a little bit about um, trying to uh, 
Darcy put together a simple poll for other counselors that simply um, tried to get at what ways they were reaching out to the public and what was and was not working for them, which I think um, we should try to take up fairly soon. So maybe not today, the 22nd, but that our next meeting, um, because I think we should maybe get rolling on that just to kind of keep up with speed with what we're and also Ed, to bring attention to um, scheduled for our um, June 3rd meeting, the president will be um, here to speak to us about the evaluation for the town manager. Is there anything, Lynn, that you think that, yep? Just to mention, because I will mention this tonight, uh, Alyssa, who's been very involved in this process in the past, have met, uh, she and I have met. Uh, we've developed a calendar, if you will, that's drafted this time. Uh, I'm bringing it to Oka because it's part of your charge, but it also heavily relies on the president to do summaries of evaluation and stuff like that. So it was important for me and my own timing, uh, if you will, to get going on this. But it's really, it's Alyssa and I've met. Uh, we've drafted a timeline, and we'll, the two of us will talk with Oka about it on the third. Is there anything else that you would like to bring up about your goals? Is for uh, just for today? I mean, we have them, but... No. <laughs> okay, okay. Does, does anybody else want to... Uh, if you've looked at the worksheet, if you see what we've got going on, does anybody else want to make any... I don't know how deep we want to dive into this. Does anybody want to, like, have me pull that up? We all want to pull it up and kind of take a... I, I don't want to. Does anybody else want to today? <laughs> where? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's in our... Yeah. 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 So let me go back to meeting packets and I'll pull it up for you or tell you which, exactly which one it's in. Right. For Oka. Right. And it's so has anything changed since the no. original suggestion? No, although the committee has the option if they want to wordsmith the actual goals. Uh, the goals, um, the ad hoc committee on goals is meeting on um, 23rd, but clearly based on the input or lack thereof that we have, this will not be our last meeting. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> so is everybody able to find that? And if they're not, then do they need help to, so that we can yeah, that email it? I'd rather if everybody could find it. Right, so. So we can talk about on the third, I think. We could do that a little bit. I don't see what, <laughs> we can't really talk about it Wednesday. No, no, I mean, no, I mean, we, can, we can try to touch on it. We also have a lot of appointments coming our way from the town manager. So there's also that to consider. Um, I would say just, yep, Darcy. Go ahead, you can finish no, your ahead. sentence. Uh, I, I just am interested in I having some clarification on what the timeline is that you that you were, are working out with the president, Alyssa. What what's that oh, about? So completely different topic. So um, I was on select. I was on select board for eleven years, and over the years, we obviously worked a lot on the evaluation process because we were the ones who evaluated the town manager. And some years, I wrote the composite, and other years, I just wrote my own individual one. I was also largely in charge of the timeline associated with that, which we kept, which 
I inherited from a previous chair, but, and um, and kept we kept updating with you know how we do things this year, how we do things this year, and so that's currently on the town website under the select board. There's a whole section about evaluation there. The interesting position the town council finds itself in at this time is that the town manager has been working under the goals that were provided to him by the select board because the town managers had to keep working whether he has a select board or doesn't and whether he has a town meeting or doesn't and so the evaluation document for this year's evaluation would of necessity be the same as what was created by the select board to go with the goals the select board established for him in the fall. So, yes, there will need to be new town council goals as soon as this evaluation is completed, but this evaluation is being done by the town council on a set of goals they themselves did not develop, which makes it an interesting year. The timeline, the only thing that I worked with on the president, she had reached out to me about the timeline, which as I said is on the town website, and we altered it to fit the town council schedule versus what used to be the select board meeting schedule, which were somewhat similar actually for summer meetings to try and back up all the different parts of the steps. You can see, while you can't yet see that draft timeline because I haven't gone over again since she and I sat together over a cup of coffee and tried to fix it, um, I haven't had a chance to, because we've been kind of busy, to look at things again, we just met last week for the first time. Um, is that we will? I will have to look at it again before the third, and you'll see it when she comes here on the third. We'll make sure it's in our packet. But in the meantime, if you want to know what it's based on, the only thing that's changing is really is dates, and that's on the select board webpage of the current town website, and it, it has the town manager timeline near the bottom of that page. And so we just pulled that document and edited it. So that is kind of irrelevant to whether OCA or anyone else is coordinating the town manager's well, evaluation. Irrelevant in that, sort of. And so the thing that I don't know, because we haven't talked, because we were talking about the timeline, that's what my purpose was, was to fill her in on why we did the things we did on the timeline. Okay. I would say that when she comes to talk to us on the third, we will perhaps be able to have a better conversation about what we have imagined in our very brief conversations here at OCA to be our role as a coordinating place for the evaluation moving forward as opposed to GOL or some other committee, particularly because of our deep involvement with the town manager associated with appointments. And the other part of it will be just her previewing the process as she understands it that she's planning to present to town council that night. So to some extent, as I indicated back at the beginning of this long and winding statement, is that because the town council's in the position of finishing up something that started before the town council existed and then moving on to the new town council way of doing things, it's kind of a weird, challenging year. And so there was not, I, the other example I can give you just for food for thought is that when the select board did the evaluation, all five select board, for, sorry for those, it's too boring, all five select board members did their own personal evaluations and then the chair looked at all five of those and wrote a composite document. All of that's available on the town website it's going back several years. At this time, given that we've inherited a set of goals that our town manager has been working under, therefore we are planning to use the same document, the same rubric to evaluate him based on those goals that were established. That means if we copy the select board process as is it for, ne for this year, that means all 13 counselors write an evaluation based on their goals, based on the goals that were established before, what their perception is of the manager's performance of those goals, and then the president writes a composite. On the other hand, there are other communities where, for example, so future, I'm not talking about this year, but for future years, in other communities, there's an executive committee that actually gets together and writes the evaluations. They don't take evaluations from all the counselors. They only have the executive committee write it, or some variation of that. In this case, we don't have an executive, we have not traditionally had an executive committee in that we've just had 
Five people evaluate, one person composites, and it moves on from there. Right now, I believe the intent is, and she will tell us on the third, um, 13 people write, one person composites. Then the question will be, as we're working our way through that actual process, what would we like this to look like in future? Is that a good process for this council at this point in time, or is there a better process out there that we could adopt? And then the question is, if there is a better process, what's our role as OCA in coordinating that? So it seems just kind of like matter of fact this year, like it just has to be finished the way it's done. But what do we want our role to be moving forward? What other kind of process might we want? And that's kind of hard to compare to for anyone who hasn't done the previous process for you on instead. And all the old stuff is on the website if you want to just see how it was done before. And like I said, the timeline that she and I worked from is, is the one we pulled off the website. I'd, I hope that we can see what Lynn is proposing before the day that she's proposing it to the council. She's that would be, right that would be nice. She's only going to preview it. We don't meet again. So she's doing it on the 3rd for the council and because there's a timeline of things to get done. And so if she doesn't preview it for the council on third, we'll be behind on the evaluation process as has been done for the last several years. So that's why she feels, com I mean, I won't speak for her, but it's my understanding is that's why we're doing that at this particular moment is that June 3rd. So again, it's important to separate, I think in our thought processes, what's happening this year is by its very nature going to be different than any other year. And the question is, what, what role do we want to play going forward? Because I don't think there's any role for us to play. I mean, speaking as someone who doesn't want to give anything up, I don't think there's any role for us to play this year in the actual evaluation part of it in terms of other aspects of it. For example, outreach is part of this process, which you'll see if you go back and look at the select board thing. We're outreach, right? And so we might have some really smart opinions about outreach that's associated with the evaluation process. But in term, but that's, again, that coordination piece, right, versus the actual filling out the evaluations. I think that there were some counselors who may have perceived that we were somehow serving as that executive committee I mentioned somewhere else. And I was like, no, 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 no. That's not what, what I believe we were planning to do. We were just talking about moving forward coordination levels that we could be useful for. So if, if there's anything else we can go see, it's not really like a, a done thing yet. So is there anything that anybody else would like to bring up before I ask for public comment? Do you want to go over, go over action items again or anything or we feel like we're good? The 22nd posted, yes. right? And so we're doing the same for folks on the 22nd. Absolutely, we are. No, no, and I know them. Of the, of the June 3rd, I don't know what day I posted it last week. The June 3rd, we are, we, so we, we have a week off. Is that correct? Are we taking the week off? We yeah, are not yes. somehow insanely yes. not no. taking the week off? Do you want to leave? No, no thank you. <laughs> 